Okay. Well, I yeah. just meant it's just anyway. the uh, you know the crescent moon rising, the Islamic transformation of America, and you know, for a small community that we live in, compared to most major places one would find a mosque. I have to say this is particularly troubling to me since we now have a, a Muslim congregation meeting in Tupelo. Yeah, mosques are springing up around the country. It's a reality, and we're going to talk to Paul Williams about that now. What, what, what should be our concern? What should be our response? Crescent Moon Rising is the name of it, uh, the Islamic Transformation of America. Paul, thank you for joining us on the program. It's a pleasure, guys. Is Jim is Jim paranoid over here, Paul? Uh, he's not not one bit, Kim. Uh, he, uh, as a matter of fact, he should be very concerned about what's taking place in the country. All over the country. All over the country. Mosques are springing up. Uh, well, you got to realize this: in the United States right now, we have three hundred thirty thousand houses of worship, and nine percent of them are mosques. Nine. The most nine percent. Nine percent. Uh, this and this is according, you know, this this is according to the Pew Research Group. Well, then that would be more. There, there would be, if that's true, I'm guessing that would be more mosques than synagogues. Oh yeah, they're, they're, wow. uh, According to the New York Times, according to Cornell University, according to this, the Council for American Islamic Relations, there are considerably more Muslims in the United States right now than uh, Jews. Uh, uh, according to conservative estimates, there are. At least six to seven million. Uh, others uh, believe there are, uh, the the real figure is closer to ten to twelve million. Now, your book is called Crescent Moon Rising. Uh, give us an. Uh, I want to jump into some of these details, but give us an overview of, of what your concern is here. Well, it's 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 basically the fact that uh, this situation is taking place. That we uh, that the most rapidly growing religion in the United States right now is Islam that uh, according to all demographers, all demographers, this is not, not me as a reporter, by uh, 2050, the United States will be an Islamic country. Uh, by what? So I, I 2050? Every, yeah. And that's for a, a variety of reasons. You've got to realize that right now uh, in the United States, uh, tens of thousands of Muslims are arriving every year uh, some arrive with work visas to occupy positions as physicians, engineers, scientists, others to work in food processing plants and agriculture, tele- telecommunications. Tens of thousands more arrive with student visas. Hmm. Uh, thousands more arrive with diversity visas. Now, it, all that adds up to about 115,000 a year, every year, arriving here with visas. Now, couple that with the problem that uh, the people who come here, the Muslims who come here with travel visas, by and large, stay here. For instance, uh, five of the 9-11 ops were visa overstays, had visa overstays. Now, uh, couple that with the fact that uh, over 80,000 are arriving here with as refugees, as refugee every year, uh, from Somalia, from uh, Iraq, right. uh, from Afghanistan, Pakistan. Uh, we have, and you've got to realize this, that right now in the United States, the average replacement rate for an American family, uh, a white American family, a uh, Christian family, is 1.8. That mm. means the average Christian family in the United States has 1.8 offspring. So we're doing, the same, thi- we're doing for, the same thing Europe, Europe's doing. Right. Same thing for Latinas, and it's, uh, it, it, but it, no, it's, it's a little bit higher for Latinas, and it's a little bit higher for African-American Christians. But Americans on the whole right now are falling below the 2.1 necessary replacement rate. Now, the Muslims, when they come here, we, they have, most of them have several wives, and uh, each woman gives, gives, uh, give, gives birth to an average of 2.8 to 3 kids. Hmm. I, thought so poly- you, I thought polygamy was illegal. No, polygamy is rampant. Even even people like uh, Siraj Rahai is the, one of the leading spokesmen of Islam in the country. He gave the uh, blessing at the uh, at the uh, joint houses of Congress. The first Muslim to do that has several wives. He openly admitted that. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's it, it, based on all figures. The the amount of Muslims who are here already, the amount that continue to pour in. And we now believe one of the great virtues in America, we, according to Barack Obama, is diversity. Of course, in the past, that was never a, a virtue. 
uh, prior to 1965, we had a quota system, and uh, all these Mos- all the Muslims and the people from the third world couldn't enter the the country at that time because we believed be- before 1965 that we had the best of all possible countries religiously, culturally. Uh, that we all share the same heritage and history and background, and we didn't want to change it. 1965, uh, uh, the Hart-Seller uh, Act passed, uh, and uh, the the floodgates to the third world, including the Islamic world, opened, and the country has undergone a uh, an incredible change. You're listening to today's issues. Our guest is Paul Williams, and we're discussing his book, Crescent Moon. Pardon me, Crescent Moon Rising. And it's the Islamic transformation of America. And, Paul, you know, we don't want to be, quote, unquote, fear mongers here. We do want to get the truth out. But one of the terms that we keep keep hearing over and over and over is that most of these folks we're talking about are simply peace-loving, moderate Muslims. Is that the case? It's it is the case. I, I, I do believe that most of them are peace loving, but uh, a, a tenet of, of of Islam is that the world is divided in two. You have the House of Harb, which is the House of Christians, which is the House of Jews, which is the House of all Kafirs and unbelievers. That's also known as the House of War, and you have the House of Islam, which is the House of Righteousness. Between these two houses, according to Islam, there is continually and must be perpetually a state of war until all of mankind is brought into submission uh, before the house of Islam. Islam means submission. So uh, y- you have that, that factor in their religion, which is, and of course, the submission can come either by proselytization or it can come by the sword. And uh, throughout, throughout our history, since the 7th century, we have seen that we have seen the, the spread of Islam primarily by the sword. Uh, uh, at least ten percent of the Muslims in this country are very, very <laughs> radical, and uh, they want to impose Sharia law on us, and uh, it, it's a problem. We have, uh, for instance, at the Farouk, uh, some of these radical mosques throughout the country. I've visited most of them, but uh, let's just look at one in Brooklyn, the Farouk Mosque. Uh, the the Imam and the leaders of the Farouk Mosque were the uh, engineers of the 1993 attack on the World Trade Center. They have been uh, responsible for terror acts throughout the the country uh, for the past three decades. They have raised over $24 million uh, for the jihad. Every, Every Sunday, members of the mosque remove from the mosque fully automatic weapons, and I understand the distinction between fully automatic and semi-automatic. These are Kalashnikovs. They bring out uh, semi-automatic weapons. They bring out shotguns. They bring out pistols. They go to a firing range in Calverton in Long Island, and at the end of the day, they store their weapons in the mosque. This mosque is being used as an arsenal, no different than the Red Mosque in, in Islamabad. And this is going on throughout the country. We have very, very, very radical mosques, uh, that espouse vehement and rabid anti-American sentiments. And uh, some of these places are known to be uh, openly dangerous and, and places of, of, of sedition, but nobody can go in there because they're houses of worship, so they're yeah. protected. Talking to Dr. Paul Williams, his book is uh, a, a very excellent uh, uh, documentation of what's happening in the country. He calls it the Islamic Transformation of America. The book is titled Crescent Moon Rising. Yeah, this is a dilemma that faces Americans that we've seen go on in Western Europe, uh, well, in Europe generally, but Western Europe in particular. Um, that I don't know that we know how to process it. We don't know what to do about it because the, the, the average American doesn't know the difference between Islam or Christianity or Judaism, they just think, oh, that's religion, or and they they teach good things, and they want people to be nice, and you know, mm-hmm. th- 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 that's the general perceptions of the American people about religion, or either they have no interest in it at all. So there's no discerning about what the differences are, uh, the fundamental differences are. Let's say between Christianity mm-hmm. and the values that spring from that. And, and then something like Islam. And so Islam can go under the radar, so to speak, except for people like you, Paul, who expose what the real beliefs are. 
and how that ultimately affects government and society, it, 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 they can go under the radar, so to speak, as a minority in a predominantly Christian majority because we do believe in things like freedom of speech and freedom of religion and freedom of expression. So we allow for them to come here and set up their mosque. All the while, you're saying ultimately it will be to our uh, demise because what the while the while the while the people may be peace loving, as you mentioned here, fundamentally what they subscribe to, Islam, doesn't allow for freedom of religion or freedom of speech or freedom for thought. So once you get to have your numbers be enough mm-hmm. uh, in the U.S., they will seek to impose Sharia law. Let's say start out with areas like Dearborn, Michigan, or other areas in the country where it, Muslims are, are dominant. And then like, will we see like in England perhaps where they allow these folks to have their own conclaves and do their own law within Great Britain? Are we going to see something like that soon? It, it, it's already in existence. Uh, we have uh, a movement throughout the United States called the National Uma Movement. It's controlled by... Uh, uh, a, a guy that was formerly known as H. Rap Brown. He's in uh, prison right now in Georgia for uh, uh, killing some police officers. Uh, uh, this movement establishes Islamic enclaves within major uh, U.S. cities. And within these enclaves, there are uh, mosques, madrasas, housing units strictly for, the, uh, for Muslims, and they, they, they abide by Sharia law. Uh, now, the interesting thing about this is uh, in, in Philadelphia, where one of these enclaves is implanted and where thousands and thousands of Muslims live, this was established by a guy by the name of Kenny Gamble, who was a songwriter who wrote Love Train and Me and, Mr. Me, Me and Mrs. Jones. Now, all these enclaves, what they do is they, they form nonprofit corporations and they re- receive money from us, from our taxpayers, uh, to establish housing uh, for immigrants and for uh, and they're, it's, they're totally Islamic. They abide by Islamic law. Uh, we have the, the, same, this, the, the same network of the uh, National Ummah uh, setting up enclaves in Brooklyn, in, in, uh, in Detroit, in L.A. It, it, it's, uh, it's prevalent. You've got to realize that the, the Saudis, uh, it, during the last three decades, and this is what should alarm all of our, everybody listening to this, have spent over $100 billion to bring about the Islamic transformation of America, uh, they've been very successful. And you, 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 you have to, I mean, they stand by their faith. They, they, they spend the dollar. Uh, right now, uh, uh, 90% of the converts to Islam in the United States are African-American. 60% are converted in prison because they have such an incredible uh, prison ministry. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you're an African-American, you're thrown in the slammer and you don't convert to Islam. You probably need to have your head examined. Is that the Louis Farrakhan brand? No, that's to- that, that 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 has nothing to do with uh, with Orthodox Islam. Uh, Farrakhan's brand, the, the Nation of Islam, believed that uh, uh, that Allah was a person by the name of Master Wallace Fard, who was a uh, who was a an ex-con who served time in Sing Sing. They believe he was uh, Allah in the flesh. They believe the first man, uh, mankind, was created on the moon out of black mud. So they but, would be considered by Muslims to be a cult. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got. Yeah. You. Let me ask you this 